Breaking news tonight, the devastating tornado outbreak that tore through the deep south. More than two dozen people killed. Entire towns destroyed. Houses wiped away. Tractor trailers flipped after a string of tornadoes ripped across Mississippi and Alabama. We can't account for everybody and it just, it just hurts. Plus a terrifying survivor stories. This woman hiding in a freezer. Vladimir Putin's nuclear escalation. Russia now moving tactical nuclear weapons to Belarus, right on the border with Ukraine. How the White House is responding tonight. Former President Trump's first big rally since announcing his run for president. Thousands of supporters lining up for hours. What he now says about the looming indictment in Manhattan. Kidnapped in Haiti. This American couple held for ransom. Their relatives in the U.S. now pleading for help. We're going to find you, and we're going to bring you home. This is NBC Nightly News with Jose diaz Ballard. Good evening. The tornadoes came at the most dangerous time possible during the darkness of night. And we are only now starting to understand the full scope of what they wrought. Take a look at this. This is the town of Rolling Fork, Mississippi. As seen from above, the path of destruction looks unending. From the ground, mile after mile of rubble. Houses reduced to nothing. One mayor said his whole city is now gone. The tornado's so strong, they tossed this car into the air like a toy. This is the path of the storms. As many as 12 reported tornadoes ripping across Mississippi and Alabama. At least 26 people killed across the two states. Rescue workers were out in full force overnight, and they will be working into tonight as well. We have two reports tonight, beginning with Priscilla Thompson in Silver City, Mississippi. The devastation was swift and severe. Deadly tornadoes touching down in the darkness of night across Mississippi and Alabama. When did you notice something was going on? When I saw the tornado. Yeah, you saw it. I saw it. What did you see? A big world, of big two tornadoes together. The damage hard to fathom. Parts of homes wrapped in trees, 18 wheelers upended, entire blocks flattened. State officials report at least 25 people dead in Mississippi, with dozens more injured. The governor issuing a state of emergency. By the fact, me and my uh, relative, we was texting at the time when the storm was coming through, and. Uh, and I got to hear his last words. At least 12 separate tornadoes touched down, one on the ground for a trail of 80 miles, leaving mass destruction in its wake. In Rolling Fork, Mississippi, where at least 13 died, one tornado is believed to have sent debris more than 30,000 feet in the air. Rolling Fork's mayor saying his city is destroyed. And what we're doing now is assessing all the damage around, along with uh, the volunteers from various counties that are here helping us to uh, locate folk who are trapped in their homes. It's chaos. Tracy Harden says she was lucky to survive, riding out the storm in the cooler of the dairy bar she and her husband own. Is the cooler still back here? Yes, this, this is the portion we were in. How are you doing emotionally right now? Um, if I don't talk, and if I just stay busy helping somebody, I'm okay. I just don't want to stop and think about it. I don't feel like I've processed it. And I don't want to process it. Their business now obliterated. The National Weather Service today deployed three survey teams to assess the damage. Images we gathered from overhead, giving an initial sense of the scope in Silver City, Mississippi. This was a room that we're standing in. Yes, so this room right here, there was a couch um, that sit right here, an area couch. It's no longer here. I don't know where it's at. Throughout the southeast today, rescue efforts have been underway. In Alabama, where one person died, Morgan County Sheriff deputies pulling a man from the mud after a trailer overturned. He's now one of the lucky ones. As officials caution, the death toll from these storms could very well rise. And Priscilla Thompson joins me now from Silver City, Mississippi. Priscilla, give us a, a sense of the damage you're seeing there. Well, Jose, the family who rode out the storm here came back to find the entire back half of their home destroyed. And while they came back to this, there are so many others here who came back to nothing. Jose? 
Priscilla Thompson, thank you. Just about 30 miles southwest of Silver City is hard-hit Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Here's what it looks like today. The devastation, astonishing. That town now simply gone. Courtney Ann Jackson from our station WLBT is there. Courtney. Jose Rolling Fork is already a small community. The businesses that they did have have now mostly been leveled. This car, an example of what we're seeing all over the town, these windows shattered, many of them busted out. You see cars on top of one another. This is at a restaurant here in town that they say was one of the main kind of hubs of folks gathering in the community. It will be sorely missed, we're told. Residents that we talked with, they're trying to process things. We saw one woman with tears streaming down her face saying, thank Jesus, I am still here. She says she'll replace those material possessions. The state and all of the nonprofits are already arriving here in Rolling Fork, trying to figure out how they can step in and just figure out where these people will go. Jose. Courtney Ann Jackson, thank you. A new escalation from Vladimir Putin. Today he announced he is putting tactical nuclear weapons in neighboring Belarus, a Russian ally, signaling a clear threat to Ukraine. Monica Alba joins me now from the White House. Monica, this is something Russia hasn't done in decades. Exactly. President Putin said today Russia does plan to station tactical nuclear weapons in neighboring Belarus, which, if it does indeed happen, would be the first time since the mid-1990s that Russia would have nuclear weapons based outside the country. Now, tactical nukes are generally smaller in explosive power designed for the battlefield, but they have never before been used in combat. And this comes as Russia's invasion of Ukraine rages on, and it's worth noting that Belarus shares a border with three NATO members. In an interview with Russian state television, Mr. Putin said construction of storage facilities for the weapons could be done by July. And the White House responding tonight saying officials have not seen any reason to adjust U.S. nuclear posture and there's no indication Russia is preparing to use a nuclear weapon. Jose? Monica Alba at the White House. Thank you. Former President Trump is in Waco, Texas tonight with a major rally stirring up support ahead of the 2024 election. Mr. Trump and his fans defiant, even in the face of his possible indictment. Von Hilliard traveled with the former president aboard his private plane. Prosecutorial misconduct is their new tool, and they are willing to use it at levels never seen before in our country. Former President Donald Trump holding the first formal rally of his presidential campaign in Waco tonight, as multiple federal and state prosecutors consider serious charges against him. In Manhattan, a grand jury could indict him as soon as Monday. It's a joke. Come on, really? Ahead of the rally, Trump suggesting government charges against him could lead to, quote, potential death and destruction, and called for the ousting of prosecutors, including Alvin Bragg, who is overseeing the investigation regarding that alleged hush money payment to adult film star Stormy Daniels. The FBI and NYPD are now investigating a letter threatening to kill Bragg. It contained a white powdery substance that authorities say was not dangerous, but one of hundreds of threats in recent weeks against the DA. Supporters in Waco today saying they have Trump's back if he is arrested. Well, if they are to protest, to, to peacefully protest. As he said on January 6th, yeah, peacefully, peacefully and protest. patriotically make your voices heard. Witness testimony before these grand juries, though, expanding. A federal judge ruling that Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, and seven other key aides must now go before a grand jury looking into January 6th. This weekend marks the 30th anniversary of the Waco massacre, when federal agents took on the Branch Davidians in a deadly 51-day siege. Today's campaign event, a setting to play defense against possible prosecution, but offense against other Republican rivals. Recent polls show Trump maintaining a strong lead over Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Oh, I love Ron DeSantis. Absolutely love him. So, but I want him to stay in Florida for now. Vaughn Hilliard, NBC News, Waco, Texas. Senator Mitch McConnell is back home tonight following a health scare. The 81-year-old GOP leader from Kentucky left a medical facility today where he was staying for physical therapy following a concussion and rib fracture. Those were caused by a fall earlier this month. In a statement, McConnell says he is working from home the next couple of days. Coming up, the race to save an American couple kidnapped in Haiti, what the family is saying about their captors' demands. We are back with the desperate efforts to save an American couple kidnapped in Haiti. 
Their family in Florida is now begging the U.S. government to help set them free. Shaquille Brewster reports. Tonight, a Florida family says the FBI is investigating the kidnapping of two Americans in Haiti. We're fighting, we're gonna find you, and we're gonna bring you home. Christine DeZorn says her aunt and uncle, Abigail and Jean Dickens Toussaint, flew to Haiti last Saturday to visit sick relatives in Laogan and participate in a festival. After the couple left the airport, she says a gang ordered them off a bus, demanding $6,000 for their release. What happened after you sent that money? We sent originally 2,400 U.S. dollars converted into Haitian currency um, and split up. And after that, we heard nothing. They did not release them. The family now pleading for the U.S. and Haitian governments to help. In December, the State Department issued the highest travel warning possible for Haiti, saying do not travel due to kidnapping, crime, and civil unrest. And this week, the U.N. warned of extreme violence spiraling out of control as armed gangs fight to expand territorial rule, saying more than 100 people were kidnapped in Haiti in just two weeks earlier this month. President Biden addressed the crisis just yesterday. The biggest thing we could do, and it's going to take time, is to increase the prospect of the police departments in Haiti having the capacity to deal with the problems they face. But for now, the Toussaint family is left praying for a swift return. How do you respond to those who question why they went in the first place? I understand why they are concerned. At the end of the day, these are U.S. citizens. This is my family, and we just want them back home hoping the couple is reunited with their baby boy back home in Florida, turning two on Tuesday. Shaquille Brewster, NBC News. That's NBC Nightly News for this Saturday. I'm Jose diaz Balart. Thank you for the privilege of your time, and good night. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.